everybody, it is Rocco, your boy, coming at you once again with another Age of Sigmar video. Yeah, I'm trying a little stuff, be a little bit different here. And uh, if you look over, oof, there they are. Who's your favorite? We got a poll going on. What is all this about? What, is, what are these three things on my screen? Who's here in this chalkboard with me? Well, to start off, hi, this is uh, AOS General talk not even really a class but it's a, it's a group discussion where i want to know who your favorite stormcast models are to ally into your order armies we're gonna have a poll up in tandem with this video launching to uh actually vote on to see you know who do you like i've got my Love it. See if it is the one that's close to me here. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, but, you know, joking aside, Stormcast historically have been the book from order that has so many War Scrolls. Games Workshop hasn't been able to fully balance everything. So, with the introduction of the uh, the quarterly updates to the game, they've, they've tried to help. They've tried to put a little, little damper on things. But some armies just when you look at what the Stormcast have and you can bring in so many points of them, you're like, you know what? Why don't I just bring in this thing? It fills my need. I ha I, I don't have the what it, what it does in my army. You know, there, there, there's a lot of things you can look at here. And here are three that I've just been seeing around for forever in 3rd edition and beyond that just really make good points. And first, we're going to start off on the far left of your screen there with the Storm Drake Guard. Being the problem child of 3rd edition, because we got dragons back. And then they just ran everybody over. Oops, all dragons became the army, the meme, the myth, the legend. That honestly just did a lot. Again, strong movement, 12. Nine wounds of dragon. Come in a pair of two. You can bump them up for a minute of uh, four if you're a Stormcast player, but... Because of a lot of points changes and different things going on, you're only ever going to be able to ally in a unit of two. I'm going to go to the camera. It's like I'm giving the peace symbol. Three up armor save, eight bravery. You're not running to battle shocks if a dragon goes down. They're a monster. They've got mortal wound shooting. If you take the lances, you're a cool person. If you take the swords, you wanted to win. Um, again, amazing unit. It flies, has a unit champion, so it can give it self-command. Uh, has the ability to have a 3-inch coherency, so it can, these models with their big old bases can take up a lot of space. But again, if you take the lances because you like the looks of things, you get really good on the charge. The, the swords are really more consistent, which, eh, you know, sometimes you live by the lance, you die by the lance. Uh, they have a spell ignore. As well on a four up, I had to double check my notes because, ugh. And again, you can do uh, unleash hell with them to potentially do two d six mortal wounds. They've got enough combat abilities that it's honestly really awesome. They've we worked the worst roll once or twice. Storm Drake Guard, everybody, very strong and powerful here, coming in at three hundred and forty points for a unit of two. And armies that take this really need the mobility, you need the mortal wounds, you need the toughness. I mean, there was a time that anyone that could ally in Stormcast was like, yeah, I'm going to take Storm Drake Guard. Of course. Like, come on now. The two baby dragons combined punch at their weight at the most recent points of 340 for the unit. You know, now that a bunch of books have come out where they've been nerfed and nerfed in Stormcast, that, you know, Marathi and the Bow Snakes can still shoot every hero phase. You know, long strikes. A unit of six long strikes used to be able to shoot once a hero phase for a command point, once per game. And Storm Drake Guard used to be a lot better. But they're still really good, and honestly, there's a chance they might get unnerfed with the power levels of all the other books being brought up to Stormcast level. Storm Drake Guard, really solid choice. 
Next is everyone's favorite, the prime time, the wielder of Gal Maraz themselves, the Celestin Prime. So the cool thing about the Celestin Prime isn't that it also moves 12s, has 8 wounds, flies, 3 up save, all very good things. In 3rd edition, we were able to get a ward save on the Celestin Prime. Gal Maraz just is a neg 3 ren, 3 damage hammer that's just awesome. It is. It's an amazing model. A little spindly. The wings aren't my favorite for storage purposes, but the beams of light, it's very evocative of everything you want Stormcast to be. This, this is the model. This is it. And at 330 points, is a very, very good ally for what you want it to do. So we have a couple rules here. I'm going to read them out. So Retribution on high, from on high. This is cool because instead of setting up this unit, the Celestin Prime, on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and say it's in the heavens as a reserve unit. So right there, off the bat, because Stormcast normally need to be in a certain type of sub-faction to get the... Because it's Stormkeep, you stand on the ground, and then you, the other one that, of course, I'm brain farting on because I'm recording right now, you could put units in reserve. And that would be under Battle Traits. That would be Scions of the Storm. So the Celestin Prime lets you get the good Deep Strike in 9 inches from anywhere ability just on the model. Right? And at the end of your movement phase, if this unit remains in reserve, add two attacks to the model's characteristic of this unit's Galmaraz Hammer for the rest of the battle. If this unit strikes from the heavens, set this up. On the battlefield, more than nine inches away from all enemy units. So, we got the good deep strike. If you stay up longer, you get the attacks on the hammer. Great. Five attacks on Galmaraz is amazing. Threes to hit, twos to wound, neg free rend, three damage. Give all out attack out. Twos and twos. Whatever you want is just going to be squished. We also have a shooting ability called... Uh, where are we? Uh, Comet Strike Scepter. In your shooting phase, pick one point on the battlefield within 24 inches and is visible to the unit. Each enemy unit within 3 inches of that point suffers D3 mortal wounds. It's not roll a dice and on a 2 up or a 4 up or a 6 up. Just point and click and delete. And this, you know. Movement happens before shooting, so you'll be down in time to get these mortal wounds to just... This isn't a shooting attack. This, this is an ability. This is straight up... It's the only weapon we have is the melee profile in Galmaraz. So, what this will do is get around the cool rules of the General's Handbook now of you can't shoot an enemy unit, an enemy hero, if they're near a unit. And th th there we are. Do that a couple turns. Three if you, you're rolling bad, and that should be a dead enemy Galatian champion. And the other cool part about this is you can pair that with other things in your armies to just wash mortal wounds out of people. Like, I don't know, the, the, the Warsong Revenant if you're running a Sylvaneth army. If you can cast your mortal wound spell through a tree that you've grown... And then finish it off with the Celestin Prime shooting. You know? Again, like, Deepkin do not have... Unless you're Nautilar or the King of the Charge. Neg 3 Ren's a little hard to come by. Mortal Wounds are very hard to come by. And having something that keeps up with your army, being able to Deep Strike, since that's kind of fallen out of vogue with Deepkin, that's really cool. Seraphon love the Celestin Prime. Caraton Overlords that need a melee a melee beat stick. Love the Celestin Prime. Is it taken all the time? No, but it's a cool tech piece. It's something that can happen. More people argue whether or not you should, but you know, this is like a little devious mind idea. But the the big thing here is third edition, we got the four up word save, but the biggest baddest thing here is Orrery of Celestial Fates. Once per turn, 
before you make a hit or wound roll for an attack made with this unit, a save roll for an attack that targets this unit, or a run or charge roll for this unit, you can say that you will foresee the result of the roll. If you do so, uh, instead of making the dice roll, you must choose the result of the roll. The result chosen for the d6 must be a whole number from 1 to 6. The result chosen on a 2d6 roll must be a whole number from 2 to 12. The result cannot be further re-rolled, but any modifiers are applied to it as normal. So, you know, if you've got like a bunch of pluses to your save, you're like, I really need to make the save roll. Great. Let's say you wanted to make a 12-inch charge. That just happens. Get into combat, plop, five attacks, neg three, three damage each. You've been in combat for a bit, you're like, oh, I need this wound roll to go through. I need to make sure this maw crush is dead. One of your wound rolls automatically wound. You know, you have options. They're very good options with this. And it's once per turn. Which, because people are always like, oh yeah, because it charges in and then that's it. it. Some people think this is once per this is once per turn. You can use this ability. That's really freaking cool. So the, you know the Celestin Prime, three hundred and thirty points, comparable to the Storm Drake Guard. Uh, I mean, if you're rolling hot on the ward saves, it's more survivable. Storm Drake Guard probably out damage you throughout the game. And you get monstrous actions. But the Celestin Prime probably eat and unleash hell from the Storm Drake Guard and then kill one and then die in return. So, you know, yeah, what what if we're doing internal balance? It's still really good. It's how how are you rolling that ward save? If we're going for what armies need, we still have mortal wound shooting. We've got deep striking, which might not be available to our army for some reason. Good combat profile. We are a better hero killer than, say, my uh, rekindled love with the Eidolon of the Storm. You're a little bit cheaper. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, um, no, a little bit more. You're cheaper in the Eidolon of the Storm by, like, 10 points. But the Celestin Prime has a 4-up ward save instead of a 5. Again, we've got, we've got options in different armies to ally in the Celestin Prime. I didn't do the dash in the name. Oh, well. But I feel like these two do not compare to what some may seem as the meme of my Kentucky Fried Aether Wings. All right? Or Azerite Fried, whatever you want to say. You know. I love Aether Wings as an ally. They come in a unit of three. Right now, they are 70 points with the last points increase. Up from 65. They are the cheap bodies that I can afford to trade with and throw away their lives in a game where I cannot afford to throw away 10 thralls for 130 points. You know? That this is this is the unit, this is this is the thing, this is the deal right here. Aether wings are amazing for their value. They don't have an armor save. I'm going to say a bunch of things that are going to sound like I'm crazy right now. And that's okay. You don't need to believe me. I know the truth in my heart, in my uh, award, my wins, my games. My friends hate them. It's great. It's great. I love Aether Wings. You can't even buy them separately. You have to get them with the box with the long strikes. That that's the multi kit for the long strikes and whatever the rapid fire version of their crossbows are. I don't even know because I only like long strikes. Um, the other ones are good, but either way, I wanted the kit for more aether wings. All right, that's that's really where we are right now. Aether wings are dirt cheap. They fly. They have a retreat and charge for who knows why. And if you were playing stormcast, they give you a buff, but we don't care about that. This is this is about allies here. So what what does this do? If I'm running my deepkin, right, with my elven units being anywhere between 130 to 180, 
Shelly baby girl is 400 and some odd, 500. Let's just go back and say she's 500 points again. I don't have room for cheap chaff that I can't care about dying. I don't. If I'm running a really elite army, I need bodies. And it's like, cool, someone gave me first turn. What am I going to do? Am I going to go up to the middle of the board with my really expensive unit that's just going to die by their whole army singling it out on their turn, bottom of one? Or am I going to feed them three Aether Wings for 70 points? I could put them in cover and be a six-up save. I could, it, I could throw a Mystic Shield on them. They're a friendly unit. They're adorable, too. And the joy... You will feel when your opponent says, oh, it's six wounds total. They're two wounds apiece. They hit on fours, wound on threes. They they fight like a liberator. They fight like a basic storm. I think now it's threes and fours on a liberator profile. But you get, you get my point. It's a basic battle line profile. I've killed stuff with Aether Wing. In my game. I've had Aether Wings where, you know, two die and one's on a wound. I auto pass the battle shock and then I send it off wherever to be annoying as hell because it's on a it's on like a twenty five it's on a small freaking base. It might be a thirty two now that I'm saying it out loud. It is a small base size. And then it's just annoying. It's in my opponent's face. They have to kill one stupid Aether Wing. And not deal with my turtle, not deal with my tree lords, not deal with my whatever else. Because I have these to screen. And Nidus Paths, you know what? Let's take my Deepkin again as an example. Am I going to close the back Nidus Path in my deployment with a 130 point unit of thralls? Or have a support hero back there that needs to be up in the front lines? Or am I going to just throw a 70-point unit of Aether Wings to stop my opponent from being able to teleport behind me? Again, I think I think this is going to be clear when the, when the votes come out. And we'll I'll tell you the results. We'll have the poll up for a week. You know, but by, by the next the next video that comes out, we'll have results. Get your friends, tell them to vote, tell them to watch the videos. This is this is a less serious one, but I'm serious about how good Aether Wings are, and I want you to be too, if you're an Order player. And if you're not an Order player, I want you to watch out for them because they are the real deal. Forget the Celestin Prime. Your opponent will too when they, they forget to deep strike them in. Forget the Storm Drake Guard. They're probably gonna get nerfed again. I don't know. Maybe they're still gonna be really good and amazing. But Aether Wings, a unit so cheap. They come in threes, so you could always be under the, the the cap. I wouldn't reinforce this to be a six because it just dies, but that's its job. You legitimately have a unit where that's all it does is die for you. And you know what? The other thing, too, let's go back. To, let's wind this back to my deepkin real bit. Enemies have to shoot the nearest unit, but they can always shoot allies. If they target the ally, but you know, deepkin, you can't shoot the nearest deepkin unit. Yeah, they have to shoot the nearest friendly unit to, to them from your army. I'm butchering the explanation, but the point is if the frickin' 70 point bird is the closest thing, it has to be shot. So if you're running into this huge shooting meta, the bird is the word. And um, I'll throw up, again, it'll be on the community page. I'll write a, a comment more about it when the time comes. I don't know if the link to the, the poll will be in the description or what exactly, because I'm a moron and hadn't actually think this all the way through. But you, dear viewer, are smart. And I think you're going to make the right call. Is it going to be the Storm Drake Guard, the Terror of 3rd Edition? The Celestin Prime, that's just everybody's best friend for deep striking and mortal wounds and melee, especially the Seraphon. 
for the humble aether wing who just wants to be loved fly into a glass window and die for you i think the choice is easy and with that ladies and gentlemen yeah i made that meme too oh man uh thanks for uh thanks for watching today and I like subscribe Try to come up with a new uh, catchphrase and tagline to say at the end here instead of class dismissed. I don't know yet. Maybe say what you want my tagline to be in the comments. Maybe we have a poll for that. Maybe we keep this going because y'all like voting for stuff. You know? Who's your favorite ally out of Starcast? Maybe we go through the different armies. Like, cool, what's a fun thing to ally out of these things? I don't know. But get in the comments and tell me if you want to know. If you want to vote. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.